Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart, joined today by Andy Lang of wagertalk.com at Bump Sports on Twitter. And oh, you can also find Andy over on the Wager Talk Instagram channel where he's given out tons of free plays for golf. And he's going to give you guys another one or another few today. Last major of the year, Mr. Bump Sports. We got the Open Championship. Let's break this one down. Let's talk about the course. Yeah, we'll start with the course here, Royal Liverpool Golf Club. You're also going to hear this referred to as Hoy Lake. Um, there's a there's a huge lake right off to the side of it. We can't really see it in this aerial picture, but so when you hear when you hear them say Hoy Lake, it's because there's a gigantic lake right next to it. This is a beautiful aerial shot of this course, and I got to say, Kelly, I think it's going to be easy this week. Uh, the weather is the biggest defense of this course, and it does not look like we're going to get very much wind. Maybe tops 20, 25 miles an hour, which is really not that big of a deal for these guys. A little bit of rain here or there, but I actually think the rain may actually help them. It's going to soften up the greens. Uh, these guys are going to be throwing darts. They played here in 2014. Now, they have made some changes to this course. They've added a brand new hole that didn't exist. Uh, but back then, Rory McIlroy just torched this place, minus 17. I think the winning score is going to be very similar. All of the par fives are gettable. You're going to see Eagles on a couple of the par fives. They've got the new hole that they added is a very short par three, 136 yards, beautiful elevated green. There's going to be at least one hole in one on, on, on that, that hole. So uh, this is going to be one of those weeks where I know it's a major and typically we see, you know, pretty high scores at majors. This is not going to be that way. The weather, the par fives, the talented field, everything is just going to make for a very low scoring tournament. Should be a lot of fun. I would not be surprised if you see a minus eight round, um, especially on Thursday and Friday when you have that the, the full field before the cut. And it seems to be the best weather there. So the course is gorgeous. It's very easy. It's very gettable. Um, you're not going to see guys hitting driver a whole lot. I think Rory only hit driver four times in 2014. It's because the, the these fairways just roll and roll and roll. You're going to see guys hitting three woods and setting themselves up for a shorter approach shot. This course is going to come down to who has the hottest putter, obviously. you got to avoid some of the tricky areas, but honestly, there's not too many penalizing holes. There's a few out of bounds areas that are pretty close to uh, up against the fairways, but overall look for a lot of birdies, uh, some Eagles, and you're going to have to get to at least minus 15 uh, to, to be in contention on Sunday. I think the winning score is minus 18 should be a really, really fun tournament. Guys are going to have to be super aggressive on this course, but should be an absolutely fantastic tournament um, because the weather isn't going to create too much havoc. So first bet for Kelly is going to be the plus money on the hole in one, except the way you make the score oh, it's, seem. Uh, it's minus 250. They know I hole in one is coming. Minus 250. Oh, you can get two goodness. holes in one at even money, though. <laughs> That's ridiculous, first of all. I am so used to being able to see that as plus money. Even the odds makers are saying, all right, you want to bet the hole in one, you got to lay it here. Uh, speaking of who you're not laying it with, you have a couple of guys that you're looking to fade this weekend, and uh, those guys are some big names here, Andy. That makes me a little apprehensive. Yeah, every week we do uh, a golf article, which is free on wagertalk.com. If you just go to my profile page, it's a free digital download. Um, we do a, a segment called Players That Can Trip You Up, and there are two guys that are just having a terrible, terrible run here. And they're two best friends, Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. These two actually – came together and uh, invested in a professional soccer team. I hope that goes better than their golf has been. <laughs> Jordan Spieth is hurt. A lot of people don't know this. So when you look at Jordan Spieth's history at Open Championships and Link-style tournaments, he plays great. Problem is he's got a torn tendon in his wrist. Since May, when the injury occurred, he's missed the cut in four out of six tournaments, including the Scottish Open, which was last week. Last week is kind of the get ready for the Open Championship. He missed the cut. He was terrible. Negative strokes gained putting and around the green. Kelly, I think Jordan Speed is going to just kind of tough it out through the rest of the season, which is over in August. And then I think we don't see him for about six months. He's got to get that torn tendon fixed. So uh, Jordan Spieth, uh, he's just a fade. We've been making a lot of money fading Jordan Spieth. 
And Justin Thomas is, it's just the nightmare year for him. Uh, his last six finishes are 60th, miscut, ninth, miscut, miscut, 65th. Uh, since May 1st, negative 0.31 strokes gained putting. That is horrific. He's not driving the ball long. He's not driving the ball accurate, which leads me to believe he's hiding some type of injury because his performance recently makes no sense without an injury. He swears that he's just in a funk and that he's not hurt. I I don't think that's true because he used to smoke the ball off the tee. But when you look at his driving distance, it's way down. His accuracy is way down. His putting is bad. Uh, these guys are absolute fade material. People are going to look at him just because of the big name value and probably you know want to support these guys. Absolutely not. Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, two guys to fade this week. All right, now let's talk about some favorites. Who do you really, really like for this tournament? I know you have a best bet, uh, 5%, in fact, over at Wager Talk, but you do have a couple of guys that are on your radar that you're going to be placing some to win bets on. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually going to play a guy, and I'm going to tell you to bet him not to win. It's Tommy Fleetwood. Why? He never wins. He's great. He just can't Poor close Tommy. the deal. I know. Fairway Jesus. He's a fan favorite. Look at that smile on Tommy Fleetwood. Uh, it's, it's fan favorite. Everyone loves him. Playing great. He's finished sixth or better in three out of his last four tournaments. Loves Lynx style golf. He's finished fourth, 33rd, second, and 12th at the last four Open Championships. The last three months, he has the 12th best total strokes gained numbers in the world. So he is just playing fantastic golf right now. I can't take him to win just because he doesn't close the, the deal. But DFS play, absolutely use him. Seasonal fantasy golf leagues, play him. Top 20 plays at plus 100, absolutely. Head-to-heads when those start to come out, depending on the matchup. Uh, he's been a fantastic guy to support over the last couple months. So Tommy Fleetwood, absolutely. And maybe then uh, Ricky Fowler. You, before you go to yeah, the next go one, ahead. maybe I can convince you of a Tommy Fleetwood first round leader bet. Oh, Those man. Those have been pretty good I, to I me. Just... I've had a couple of guys that I thought, you know, hey, John Rahm's going to come in here. Scotty Shuffler's going to come in on Sunday and absolutely obliterate my bet. Uh, actually, the last one was Patrick Cantley that I did cash. So maybe Tommy comes out strong. And as you said, he's not a great closer. Okay. If you're going to play first round, Wait until Wednesday and look at the weather. It looks like the Thursday morning wave guys will have a little bit easier time. I think the wind picks up as it goes on. If Tommy Fleetwood tees off early, yes, go ahead and fire away. Try Maybe, maybe we can cash a winner on Fleetwood to be first-round leader. Just make sure he tees off in the morning on Thursday. I will allow that. How's that? Okay, that sounds perfect. I, You know, these are some of these these longer shot guys, Like as you, as you mentioned. They just can't close. He is one of them, but that doesn't mean he doesn't start really hot. We've seen uh, a little bit of electricity, especially in Europe, from him this year. So maybe uh, that might end up on my card, depending on his tee time. Yeah, th these guys, I mean, just because they don't win doesn't make doesn't mean that there are numerous ways to profit off of them. So when I'm picking these guys, I'm, I'm hoping they check the box in a bunch of different categories. You don't just have to play them on outright. So, yeah, Tommy Fleetwood's got to be good. Up next, well, let's uh, let's talk Ricky Fowler. Uh, the The complete resurgence surprise of the year has got to be Ricky Fowler. Sixth best total strokes gained for 2023, and in the last 30 days, he's number one. I uh, made the cut in seven straight Open Championships. Uh, he loves link style uh, golf. Traditionally, he plays very well over in Europe. Uh, I, I went back and looked in 2014 when they last played at this course. Uh, for the Open Championship, he finished second. So uh, he's got good history here. He plays Lynx golf really well. He finished 42nd last week at the Scottish Open. It was due to one really bad round in the fourth round. I don't think he was really that focused because he really wasn't, he didn't have a chance to win going into the fourth round. So I think he kind of turned his mindset to looking at uh, this week. Gears up for that, plays Lynx well. And I, I could argue this is his best year as a professional, all things considered. I mean, he was, I mean, almost written off last year, made a, 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 a change for his coach, his swing coach, putting his numbers have completely reversed. He's putting great approaches are great. Driving is great. I can't find any holes in his game. He won two tournaments ago. Uh, I, 
I think this is a guy you can put a little sprinkle on to win. I think he'll be there. His putting on a course that it requires you to go low to win, he his putter has been hot all year. It can get real hot at this course. And again, DFS, absolutely. Top 20s, absolutely. Head-to-heads, absolutely. And Kelly, we talked about players to fade. Oh, man, if I could get him a head-to-head matchup, Ricky Fowler versus Jordan Spieth, or Ricky Fowler versus Justin Thomas, yeah, sign me up for that. Yeah, I always like those head-to-heads as well. But you know what I really like? Those long shots, Andy. I know you have a dark horse. That's my favorite part about doing these with you. Now, we haven't hit one yet this year, but we've had a couple close ones where it was really, uh, well, let me put it this way. You had Wyndham Clark. Uh, He didn't win it that week, but then he turned right around and uh, was in the mix. And then, of course, ultimately won a few weeks later. That's how the cookie crumbles. But this one's interesting. I'm really shocked to see him on your list, but you have some good rationale here. Oh, yeah. Robert McIntyre, I could argue he may be the most motivated, if not one of the top five most motivated golfers to win this week. So Robert McIntyre may not be familiar to the casual American golf fan. Uh, A couple years ago, he was the rookie of the year on the European tour, and we're getting him at 70 to 1. Why do I like this guy? Well, he is a Scottish golfer, and last week he was almost on the verge of winning the Scottish Open. It looked like it was going to go into uh, extra holes, and Roy McIlroy hits a long putt on 18 to win by one shot. McIntyre was heartbroken. Rory apologized to him. I've never seen a golfer apologize for winning a tournament, but Rory like legit felt bad that he won the Scottish Open and took it away from uh, from Robert McIntyre. So I've got an extremely motivated golfer. I have a guy that plays on the European Tour, so he knows link style golf very, very well. Here's the thing. He's played in three Open Championships. He's finished 34th, 6th, and 8th. Second last week in the Scottish Open, fourth the week before. He's played in 11 majors. He's only missed the cut once, and he's finished top 40 in six of the majors that he's played in. He's got a great track record. He knows this course very well. He knows this style very well, very motivated, playing great recently. He checks all the boxes. 70 to 1 is a really, really good price. And again, You want to sprinkle this guy on top 40s, maybe just to make the cut. Maybe if you get really nice plus money on uh, top 20s. There's a lot of ways to cash in on these long shot dark horses. But Robert McIntyre at 70 to 1, probably my favorite dark horse this week. I love to hear it. Uh, I'm going to be definitely sprinkling on him and being able to match him up with a couple guys uh, at some plus money as well. Andy, give us a little promo over at wagertalk.com and then give us your best bet for this video. Yeah, we're running well in golf. We've never had a losing season in golf since joining Wager Talk. I am so proud of that record, and we're up really, really nice this year. 14 and 8 since June, plus 14 units, so we're seeing golf really well right now, and we do have a 5% play that is up right now. I do not release too many 5% plays. Uh, I released one earlier this year, and it, it tied. So um, three, one, and one over the last five 5% plays. We don't do very many of them, but... There's a 5% play that is up there. And along with it, you get all the other plays that I will have for the Open Championship. So it's not just one play. It'll be the full pack. So very, very excited about that. Looking forward to cash yet again. The last major was uh, was a really profitable one. We were at plus 10 units right around there. So seeing golf really well and looking forward to finishing out uh, this golf season really strong. I love that. Give me your best bet for the Open Championship. Yeah, just rinse and repeat. Scotty Scheffler to finish in the top 10. When you're playing these top 10s and top 20s, make sure you check your books. You need to know if your book pays out in in ties, uh, if if their book pays out full in ties, or if they use the dead heat rules. So always check your books. I always like to play um, that pays out full in ties. I'm willing to pay a little bit of extra juice, especially with top 10s, because if they finish tied for seventh, you want to make sure you get your full payout there. All right, so in 2023, Kelly, Scotty Scheffler has played in 15 tournaments. His worst finish is 12th. It's incredible. This is an all-time year in golf from this guy. Uh, this bet is 12 and three this year. If you would have just blindly bet Scotty Scheffler top 10, you're 12 and three. He's number one in total strokes gained. He's finished fourth or better in six straight tournaments. Fourth or better in six straight. That is that is insane. That is like Tiger Woods uh, when he was at his peak type of numbers. 
Uh, you're getting a fairly fairly good price on this, minus 140 uh, for dead heat rules. I believe it's going to come out around minus 160 or minus 170 for paid in ties. It's just one of those bets that you just play every single week. The crazy part is he's not that good of a putter. It's just his drives and his approaches are so good that it makes up for it. If this guy finally gets his putting together, this is a guy that can win this this tournament. He could win this by four or five shots if he gets a hot putter. But uh, even if his putter isn't that hot, he still has managed to finish top five most of the time. So Scotty Scheffler, top 10, rinse and repeat. I'll be playing it again this week. You love that bet, and I do not blame you. Scotty did change his putter, what, a month ago now? So let's hope that uh, he does get hot and cash that bet for you. Again, Andy's 5% bet over at wagertalk.com, wt.buzz backslash AL. Also, make sure you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on the road to 200,000 at this point. And uh, guess who's in charge of the Instagram these days? That's why it's doing so poorly. So at least do me a favor. Go over and follow Wager Talk on Instagram. I have had more tech issues than you can imagine Oh, Andy's laughing because he's part of that group chat. Thank you to Andy at Bum Sports on Twitter. Make sure you guys are giving him a follow. And uh, Andy, I guess we'll see you next golf season. This is our last major. I'm so sad. That's all right. Maybe we can talk into doing one for the very last tournament, the championship of the year. Maybe. We'll see.